As football analytics has grown, so has the way that we evaluate matches, players, performances, and with that, new metrics have been developed. So the one we are going to be talking about today is called expected points, and we're going to go into what it is, how we calculate it, and then a simple implementation in Python. So we're jumping over into this Jupyter Notebook, and expected points is actually very simple underneath the hood. The mathematical equation basically is just we are giving the probability of a win times three plus probability of a draw times one plus the probability of a loss times zero okay so we give basically the probability of winning three points the probability of drawing one point and then the probability of losing zero points and this does very well for us especially when we're evaluating post-match performances or we're trying to forecast different outcomes for different matches and so for example just a couple of examples of where it's used 538 when they were doing their soccer analytics they were doing it to project matches and to project basically the final score which is what you're doing with expected points we're taking the likelihood of goals being scored so we're taking expected goal values and we're just basically saying, okay, what is the likelihood that they scored zero goals, one goal, two goal, three goals, four goals, or in this case, five or more goals. You could theoretically do it all the way up until like 100 goals if you wanted, but it doesn't really make sense as most matches aren't going to see a team score more than five goals. And then another example is if we go over to understat.com and you look at their team, they use it for post-match analysis to basically predict what the team should be at given their performances and given their expected goal numbers. So to do this in Python, it's actually very simple and we're just going to basically use a simple example and we'll just use our own numbers to do this calculation. And to do this, we basically have four steps we need to take. The first one is we need to aggregate the expected goal values together. And then we need to model those goal probabilities using the Poisson distribution. And I butchered that because I'm not French and I do not know how to say that last name. So if I said that wrong, I'm sorry. I'll say it wrong throughout the whole video. And then we're going to use that distribution to determine the match outcome probabilities. And then we can calculate the actual expected points given those probabilities. So we'll get started right now and we'll just do a step-by-step -step implementation in Python and we'll say import numpy as np and then from scipy.stats import Poisson, okay? It looks like poison, but it's Poisson like that. So this is the Poisson distribution. And so our first step, and if you haven't installed those, go ahead and install them. Our first step is we need to just get the aggregate values for the expected goal. So we'll just say team A um, XG equals the sum, and then we'll give it a list of XG values. So we'll do 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.2, and then 0.15 for team A, okay? And then we'll do team B XG, and we'll say equals the sum. And then for this one, we'll do 0 0.05, um, we'll do 0 0.1, and 0 0.05 again, okay? And so if we print these out, we'll see print team A X G and team B X G. So as you can see, the aggregate value of team A's expected goal values is 0.5. And then the next one is 0.2 for team B. Okay, so that is basically the first step. And so now what we do with this is we're going to use the Poisson distribution to take this value and we're going to basically model the probability of scoring up to five goals given this expected goals value. So what the Poisson distribution does is it models the probability given a constant rate or an average rate. And that average rate in our case is this expected goal value. And so to do this, we'll say team A goal probs equals, and then we're going to use a list. So we'll say list and we'll do Poisson.PMF, I, and then Team A, X, G, for I in range, okay, and we'll say six. So we're doing range six, not five, because it starts at zero. So we're gonna model from zero to five goals. And then we'll say T, 
team B goal probs. And then you can just copy this whole list right here if you want, and then just paste it down here. But make sure you switch team A for team B like that. And then if we run this, so now let's look at just what one of these are. So if we say team A goal probs, and so this is the Poisson distribution outcome for the expected goal value of 0.5. So it's saying that with 0.5 expected goals, we're giving it a zero goal probability of 0.6, a one goal probability of 0.3, and so on. And then you would see the same type of scenario with team B goal probabilities. And so the next thing we need to do is we just need to create a matrix and we're gonna be using some linear algebra here to basically calculate all the different outcome probabilities by using just matrix multiplication. So to do this, we're just gonna say match probs equals NP dot outer, and then we'll do team A, team A goal probs, and then team B goal probs, like that. And so that's going to give us our match probabilities. It's gonna basically give us the probability of team A scoring zero goals, team B scoring zero goals, and then team A scoring one goal, team B scoring zero goals. It's gonna look, if you look at the numbers underneath the hood, it'll look something like this right here. And so now what we're gonna do is just calculate team A's probabilities from that match probabilities. We're gonna calculate team A's probabilities to win, draw, and lose. So we'll just say P win equals NP dot sum, and then we'll do NP dot trill, okay, and then we'll match probs, and then negative one, like that. And then the probability of a draw equals NP dot sum, and then NP dot diag, okay, match probs. And then we'll do probability of a loss equals NP dot sum, NP dot trio, and then match probs one like that. So this is going to give us all of our different probabilities of winning, drawing, and losing for team A. So go ahead and run that. And so now we can take these probabilities and we can just plug them into our original formula up here, right? So if we just copy this and bring it down here, we'll say probability of win and then probability of draw and then probability of loss times zero. And so this will give us the expected points. And so we run this and we get 1.55 expected points. So we would say, given this scenario right here, we expect team A to get 1.55 expected points. And that is just basically a simple mathematical calculation and approach to expected points. And so as you can see, this is a very simple mathematical equation, very simple underneath the hood. It's just using a little bit of probability and a little bit of linear algebra to calculate these different match outcomes. And it's very useful for analyzing teams, analyzing performances over and under performance or forecasting matches. There is kind of one big nuance with expected points in the way that it is calculated is that it is done with basically the assumption that goal scoring is done at a constant rate, which means that in the first minute you have the exact same probability of scoring a goal as you do in the 90th minute or the 45th minute, which we know is not necessarily true. In the first minute, there could be different scenarios than there are in the 90th minute. And this is due to things like game state, things like fatigue, personnel, which team is playing which team, it doesn't really take that into account. It's kind of a naive model, but it does really help us and simplify the calculation for modeling and for kind of getting these outcomes. And so it's important to understand that, that it is a very simple model, a very simple calculation, but it does have the downside of not understanding game state, not understanding you know game dynamics or influences on the game. So be sure to keep that in mind when you are actually calculating and using expected points in your model. But this is just one of the first metrics that you can use for 
actually calculating and analyzing football. If you want to learn how to calculate, for example, progressive passes, go ahead and check out this video and it will show you how you can do that in Python.